Good morning, bro. What's good with you? What's up with you? You good? Yeah, bro. Just going through some of this mail, some of mommy's mail, and this other stuff, man. Trying to get these affairs in order, bro. Bro, it's a lot. Yeah, I figured as much. You got it, though, big fella. You can handle it. <laughs> trying to be funny, man. I'm coming down here with that attitude stuff this morning. I'm trying to take care of business. I ain't right got here. no attitude. Trying... You the one with the attitude. I ain't trying to go through this with you, man. Look, we just gonna handle Ma's business, sell this house, and just be done with it all. Sell the house? Bruh, we're not selling the house. Look, this right here is a Patterson legacy, bruh. We're not selling the house. This house gonna be for your kids, my kids. We could live in it if we wanted to, bro. Don't wanna live in it. Could rent it out for Airbnb. It's generational wealth, bro. Think about it. I moved out of this house for a reason, and I ain't moving back in for them same reasons. You're right, this is our house. But if you want it, you just gonna have to buy my half and do whatever you want with it. But just make sure you CTC. CTC. Cut the check. I don't want no parts of this house. Bruh. This house, that's a Patterson legacy, bruh. <laughs> Listen. Remember that time? You, you, matter of fact, you had stayed home sick. Mommy kept you home sick from school, right? And when I had gotten off of school, I came home and mommy was gone. She was still at work. Remember we dug in in the, the, in the drawers and, and pulled out our church clothes? Mm -hmm. I, boy, mommy would have kicked our butt if she knew we was in there. And we put those, our little suits on, we was, uh, we was acting like the, the car salesman. You remember? So we used the magazines from out in front of the grocery store, the free ones that you get, had all this, the, uh, the used cars in there. And we'd act like we were selling them to each other. You don't remember that, bro? Let me take you down another road, bro. Look right there. You see that? Bruh, that's our measurements as we're growing up, bruh, from when we were kids. I mean, obviously mine is the taller one, but, bruh, I mean, those are memories, man. Bruh, we not selling the house, man. We not giving up this legacy, man. This is a Patterson legacy, bruh. We gotta maintain it. Simple as that. A Patterson legacy. That ain't my legacy. Patterson was your father, not mine. My daddy dead. Memories. Remember how you was talking about I was at home sick? I wasn't home sick. Ma kept me home because she beat me with extension cord. She didn't want the teachers to see my bruises and call the people. So she kept me home until my bruises healed up. And I remember that time dad told her to go measure that boy. He looked like he getting taller. She didn't want to do it because she was watching some TV show and she was folding clothes. So dad popped her in the back of the head. So her being mad at him, she slammed my head against the wall so hard it bounced off. Then she choked me up against the wall to keep my head still while she measured me. So yeah, we got memories. We got different memories, different legacies and different views on this house. And my view is to sell it. We not selling the house. This is a Patterson legacy, period. This fool shaking the table. All right, look, we ain't got to sell the house. Thank you. Just buy my part and you do whatever you want with it. Other than that, I'm out. I ain't got time for that. You can afford it. You're mommy's favorite. You Cut the check, man. I, that's it. You tripping, man. Hold on, let me get... Oh, okay, this... Hold on, man, this is Mr. Price. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was actually sitting here uh, talking with Solomon about it right now. We were going through some paperwork together. Yep, we're on for 1030, so we will uh, see you here shortly. Yes, sir. Uh, peace and blessings to you, too. All right, see you shortly. All right, bro, go get ready, man. That's Mr. Price right there, man. We got our appointment at 1030. Cut the check.
Yes, I'm still in school. Boy, this that sound well. Come on, man, let's go. I'm right here. What are you talking about? Hey, listen. When we get in there, let that lawyer say whatever it is he got to say. Please don't be asking a bunch of dumb questions. Dumb questions? First of all, man, you woke up with a damn attitude all damn morning, man. Don't get in here and be on no unprofessional stuff. Unprofessional? You ain't even got on a professional attire. Why ain't you got a button-up shirt? We need to get no pants and where your shoes at? Well, first of all, bro, this is pretty fashionable and it's 90 degrees outside. You couldn't put a button-up shirt on? I could have. Why am I going to sit up here and argue about my time, man? Let's go. We got business to take care of. Boy. I don't want to argue about nothing. I don't even want to be here. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in and for being on time. And please excuse that we're not in my office. We're having some construction done, so uh, it's a little dusty around here, but uh, conference room will do just fine. Of course, I wish we were meeting under different circumstances, but your mother, she was a great friend and client. Unfortunately, as hard as it is for me to say, this one's hurting me a little bit harder than it is usually. We thank you, Mr. Price, for, for you know, taking care of this and everything. So we, we really appreciate it, sir. Of course, of course. That's what I'm here for. Uh, she made my job easy. I just have to read a letter and hand you all two individual envelopes that she prepared. Later on, now if you have any questions or if you need anything... Mr. Price, uh, so I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. But uh, I have a plan to catch, so if we can expedite this, I would appreciate it. And really, I just want to know how do we go about splitting the house and splitting that two ways and so I can go about my business. Well, well bro, we talked about this already. We not selling the house. Now, don't come up here in front of Mr. Price start trying to change things up. I was talking to Mr. The... Price. If your name ain't Mr. Price, shut up. Bro, hold on now. You're being very disrespectful. You're being you disrespectful. This you ain't even bro. We not going to come in. This is not a boxing ring, and I'm not a referee. I have other clients I need to see today, so if you don't mind, can we get back to the matter at hand? You're right. Yes, sir. Apologize, sir. Thank you. Now, I have two envelopes here for both of you. And also a letter that was left that I'm to read to both of you before you leave today. And that letter reads, Hey, my loves. I didn't want any bickering over my few little items, so I wanted to make this fair and easy for both of you. I know you probably don't want to have any old lady trinkets, but here it goes. The two of you can have whatever you want, and anything you can agree on will be sold and split down the middle. Period. Any and all financial investments I have left will be split down the middle as well. As for the china set, my jewelry, clothes, shoes, and that piece of car I have in the garage, Make sure that goes to my only grandchild. Now, any of my yard equipment, lawn mowers, and hedge trimmers, all those things in the shed can go to Raymond. All of my journals, my little library, and everything in my office goes to Solomon. With that being said, the only thing left is the house, and since Raymond has a house already, I'm sure he wouldn't mind his brother having one as a solid foundation to begin his next journey in life. Solomon. The house is yours. I pray you both take what little I have left with love and know that I'm sorry and I don't have more. But I will always love you even after I'm gone.